blah, blah, blah. So um, I feel like it's a little bit weird for me to be here with many gamers, professional gamers, or becoming professional gamers and game developers. I'm not a gamer. The last and I think only game I played in my life was Doom. When I was a student, I'm, I'm 42 years old, so it's really a long time ago, and I stopped. Um, that's, that's my story, story with him uh, until I decided to try to uh, and I became a teacher, a math teacher, an economics teacher. And I was really struggling to communicate what mathematics is. So everyone has a game. My game, it's not a video game, my game is to teach or make sure kids can learn mathematics in an efficient manner and have fun with it. This is my game these days. That's the game I'm playing. I've been playing this game for three years now. And I'm designing games, video games, if not, even, if, even if I'm not from this industry, to convey mathematics. That's the only reason I'm here today. And it's a little bit weird, I must say. So when I go through the games you have made, uh, I'm not interested, actually. <laughs> it's weird. I, I, I'm interested by other kind of games. So um, I have to tell a little bit uh, an anecdote. My wife is a child psychiatrist. And um, she is um, convinced that, that we spend, and especially kids, spend too much time in front of a screen. So I'm also very conservative, and my kids, three kids, they are not allowed to be in front of a screen for so long. We don't have TV at home, we don't have Xbox, we don't have any console. We have many iPads, because I'm creating iPad games. Um, so it's kind of a contradiction to be here today. So um, I don't consider myself as a good uh, guy to explain how to design games because the games I'm designing are very specific and special. But maybe um, it might inspire you to see what I've done um, with my game to teach mathematics in a more efficient way. So it's more the, the entrepreneurship which might be appealing to you in this story. So, uh, I'm a big dreamer, and I hope you are too. Um, I have this goal to create five games to convey the big ideas in mathematics in less than 30 hours of gameplay. This is my goal, actually, very concrete. Um, my little company, little studio, has created two games so far. Uh, the first one was called Dragon Box Algebra, and it's meant to teach or be a supplement to teach how to solve equations. And the second one has been just released. It's about how to do proof in geometry. And it remains three areas that I should cover with games. One about number sense, the other one about functions, and the last one about statistics. This is my game. It's, it's a little bit crazy. Uh, I've been inspired by three uh, celebrities or known people. Uh, Betty Edwards, she wrote a book, uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Have you heard of this book? Yeah? Uh, Timothy Galway, The Inner Game of Tennis. So these two people are very uh, interesting. Uh, Betty Edwards, she devised this uh, methodology or method to teach to anyone, almost, how to draw. Not the imaginative and creative aspects, but really draw the reality around us. And uh, Tim Galloway is how to play tennis. Uh, and there are some videos made by Alan Kay. Have you heard of Alan Kay? No? Okay. He was quite famous uh, in Apple history. Uh, he could teach 
almost anyone to play tennis or a decent game of tennis in 20 minutes. It's mind blowing, actually. Uh, and these two people have something in common. They struggled in their field. They were teachers, right, or instructors. And they felt that they failed miserably. They were thinking, something is wrong. The more I talk, the less my students learn. So they questioned themselves, and they listened. And listening is extremely important if you are a teacher. Um, while I was a teacher, I was thinking I was listening, but I was not. And one day I realized that the problem with my teaching was not the students, it was me. I was in Gran Canaria. I had three pupils, not 30, not 100, three. And I failed to teach them so that they could get the best grades. And then I questioned myself, and based on the literature, Betty Edwards and Tim Galway, I started the process to think, how can I do that better? So I have to listen. So listening is key, and I'm sure you, you've read this book uh, from Jess Gels, uh, The Art of Game Design. I think the first, the very first, it's in the introduction, I guess. He says that the most fundamental uh, ability that a game designer should have is the ability to listen. And it's perfect. There is a perfect match between video games and actually a teacher, because you have to design something and you have to listen. The third person is Montessori, and uh, she's very famous to have listened to the kids 100 years ago. So basically, uh, this process is about trying to understand how kids are thinking, or students are thinking. You have to put yourself at the same level as they are. Uh -huh. Might be difficult for many people, but if you are playful enough, it's fun. It's really fun. Kids have a lot to teach us, actually. This is the first paper prototype that was made of the game Dragon Box Algebra. Um, I recommend to anyone in the game industry, if I'm not from this industry really, but I think um, I can see that many people never use any prototypes in paper or testing interactions with people. I think it's the biggest failure they are making. I think everyone should prototype with paper. So this is algebra. I guess you can't see it's algebra with this prototype, but basically I changed the interface of algebra so that kids could play with these uh, objects. So my business is to create digital manipulatives so that kids or anyone can play with mathematical objects. This is at the heart of my business. It's a question of design, right? I will show you the game, and I will demonstrate the, the game afterwards, but basically the game today looks like that. So let me show you the prototype again. And the game it took one year to go from this um, vision of the game to something that could be played and be appealing to kids. So the, the, the good news, and I'm pretty convinced of that, I know that many researchers are not, I'm pretty convinced that if we listen enough, video games have a major role to play in mathematics education. So I think we can create real learning games that would enable almost anyone to have an experience on with mathematics, which is beautiful and meaningful. 
So I started as a game designer, right? But it was not enough. Um, because you never know how the game is going to be played, right? There are many parameters. Like any game, I guess, you can play by itself, you can play at home, you can play in schools, you can play with friends, you can play with your parents. So there are many situations. And since I know that this is a game, it's scalable, I started thinking that I would like to have a bigger impact on I need to control more how the game is played. So from game design, I started inquiring what I call learning experiences. Design of learning experiences. That's what I'm doing now. So the usage is as important as the tool. That's what I use. Now, so to design something or design this experience, you have to be bold, right? So with uh, our research partner, the University of Washington, we decided to create big events where learning would be kind of a party. At least that's our perspective. So it, it, it sounds, sounds like you're completely crazy. You're going to organize a party where kids are going to learn algebra. Yes, this is the goal. That was the goal, and we did it. So we designed what we call a, an algebra challenge. So it's an event where we gather many kids, and their one goal is to solve a certain number of equations. It lasts for a week, so you can contribute. Each individual can contribute. And at the same time, you can have a competition between schools, between districts, and even nations. So we created a big event in uh, Washington State as a test. And in January 2014, we had a national event in Norway. This is a unique event. Nobody has done that before. And it gathered many, many, many kids. And the good news is that many teachers were with us. So here is a picture of the opening ceremony uh, at the center, so maybe you don't know who it is. Do you know who this woman is? This is the Prime Minister of Norway, Erna Solberg. And uh, it was a great pleasure and honor that she opened this ceremony. Um, so we organized this event. We invited all math teachers and kids to participate to solve, I think, more than 300,000 equations or something like that. So what happened? What happened? It was a super successful event. So successful that our servers crashed because all the teachers and kids, they log in at exactly the same time. A quarter over eight. And one hour later, we would uh, have this opening ceremony. And uh, one of my colleagues called me and said, Jean-Baptiste, um, I don't know, but it sounds like, or it seems as if our servers crashed. Can you imagine this situation? You're going to meet the TV, the press, the prime minister. And just one hour before that, your servers have crashed. But I think I lost two years of my life there. Maybe more. I might die of a heart attack any time now. <laughs> uh, so it, it was really interesting. And our research partner actually fixed that just before. It was really like a movie, you know, with the climax. And, and they fixed that, and, and everything was okay five minutes before the Prime Minister entered the room. Uh, there is another reason why I wanted to organize that kind of event. Um, you can be innovative in creating resources, but I feel like it's super important to be innovative with the social interactions as well.
to see really what's going on when your players are playing in real life at a bigger scale. So a lot of things happened, and as a teacher it was very interesting. I'm going to share with you a few thoughts I got from the results we got from this event. Um, one thing that was really surprising, kids were playing at night. And I remember I was tweeting to some kids, boasting that they were solving many equations at night. I was you have to sleep. As a teacher, I'm so conservative. I was thinking, no, you, you, you can't play video games at night. It's not good. And it, it's, maybe you, you don't really buy, uh, you're not in this situation. But as a teacher, I, I wanted really to, to do something good. And it was unexpected. Unexpected. So the, 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 the takeaway of that is actually in the right social setting, you can motivate kids to learn anything. And this is very important from my perspective, uh, since I want to teach more efficiently. The second thing that happened, or maybe I forgot to tell that, uh, the best class would win an iPad set for all kids. So w we had maybe 36,000 kids playing and we experienced something really weird. We, we saw that kids were starting cheating, right? They found a hole in the system, and they pretended to solve equations, but they were not solving equations in the game. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And kids were so engaged, and teachers as well, they started complaining. They complained. And then some teachers sent to us some mails. Statistically, it's impossible that these kids are solving that amount of equations per player. So they were, they were performing analysis of the data that were on the leaderboard, right? And, and, and everything went really out of control. Many people complained on Facebook, on Twitter, they called us, they were angry. So it was a super high level of engagement just for an event that was meant to be a learning event. It turned out to be a real normal event, like any social event you have, with deep engagement. So what does it mean for me as a teacher or an educator? Um, if there are some educators here in this room, I think it's important. Uh, I think we don't trust enough our students and kids. And we are trying to micromanage the content they have to learn instead of designing the right goals. With the right goals, anyone would learn what it takes to achieve this goal. So instead of doing what we do in schools, or maybe yeah, in schools in particular, we should really spend time designing the right goals, which are wider. I want to show you this data because this is not just a game. We are some in something more than a game. We are into learning, and we are in the power of games and the power of big data. So what we can see, based on this big amount of kids, 42% of the time play, they played, it was outside school time. So when you think of homework, you can engage really students in a different way through video games. We knew that, but here we know also that they learn, really. So 42% of their time spent on learning outside school without somebody saying, you have to play. This is a major achievement. And then come uh, some more data that I think are really cool and interesting. Because we can measure how much content, that means how many levels kids need to achieve mastery. So between the 10%, the, the slowest learners, and the 10% um, uh, Roskast, what do you say that in English again? The, the fastest learners, we need four more, 
four times more levels. Okay? Just think of that. It means some kids should have a book like that, and others should have a book like that, basically. And we can measure the time it takes for the slowest learners and the fastest learners. And here, this data, every, anybody in, interested in education and really serious about education, they should take that very seriously, because we don't have that kind of data, I think. And at least, to me, as a teacher, it came just like, it was mind-blowing. Seven times more time for the slowest learners in comparison with the fastest learners. Something that could take one year for a kid is going to take seven years for another. And I say one kid, it's the, the size, right? The 10% slowest and the 10% fastest learners. It's enormous. It, uh, if we are serious about this data, we should, of course, make more research about it and uh, make sure that we can rely on these statistics but it should have direct consequences on how we teach and uh, how we separate people between, um, not with age groups, but by engagement or I don't know. But actually, it's no surprise that many kids are not interested in going to school. Uh, big data, uh, the um, Center for Game Science, our partner in Washington, each time there is uh, an, an algebra challenge organized, they can improve their algorithms so that the adaptability of the levels that are served to the kids uh, is better customized. So between the Norway algebra challenge and the last algebra challenge we performed in uh, Minnesota, they could go from 93% mastery, I mean, um, reach of kids to 95%. So it's enormous high number of kids who can master these basic concepts in algebra. And it takes less time. So I know that uh, in, in the game industry, it's extremely important to tune, you know, these analytics. But in a learning, from a learning perspective, it's also extremely interesting if we can really see how uh, kids are learning and design a learning pathway which is um, better. So I think this kind of thinking could have or could be used also in the gaming industry because it's about learning as well. You have to learn the controls in the game, you have to learn different strategies, I don't know. So there are very many parallels between these two industries actually. I'm not even sure that it's different industries. So to, to, to wrap up this, uh, this side, uh, I'm a strong believer that we can create learning games and we have to do it. And we are just at the beginning of this new um, era. And I'm sure many researchers think it's not correct and we cannot do anything with digital uh, resources or video games. I, I think it is the thing. It's an extremely good supplement but nobody has really spent time and uh, passion to create these tools. So I guess many positions in the game industry will be in the learning game industry. So we can create these games, we can design events and experiences, and we can implement that at a higher, uh, at a bigger scale. We did it in Norway, so that means we can do it anywhere else. Been there, done that. So anyone can do it, because it has been done earlier. And it works. And researchers, they can research more on that. So um, how much time do I have? I don't see Ulf. OK. Um, is it OK if I show you a little bit the games and explain the, the design process behind it? Yeah. I don't hear you laugh, and uh, I'm certainly super serious about this. I'm very sorry. Um <laughs> Usually I'm a cool guy, and I'm very funny. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's serious stuff to me. I mean, it's, uh, I'm on a mission there. I'm serious. Um,
I think I need help now. I tested that. Uh oh, cool. So, so uh, we, we made three games in, 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 in uh, almost three years. It's one game a year. It's really slow. So we need really other people to do this kind of games. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start actually with the, 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 the last one about geometric proof. So uh, we are very serious about the, the, um, the, the experience that we are offering to kids. So uh, b basically you have this, uh, it's an island, uh, island mountain. At the top of the mountain, you have a dragon, and you have, yeah, scary. And you have basically to kill the dragon. So, so um, it starts very gently. I mean, in, in, in that kind of learning games, scaffolding is really important, and you need to introduce the, the concepts little by little. Um, yeah, just like if you would uh, teach a kid to play chess. You don't introduce all the moves and the, you know, the figures at the same time. So we do same. So let, let's. So basically, we start with the very basic principle. We want kids, five years old, for example, they must be able to play this game, basically, alone or with their parents. So we introduce the concept of um, triangles there, and. Um, I think the most important or largest or biggest barrier to learning mathematics is language. So in all our games, I remove the language barrier and I use a new language. So follow me. You see the little character at the bottom here? This is your goal. You have to, to build an army to, to fight the dragon. And actually, this character is a symbol so there is a language, right? It's a symbol for a triangle. Actually, any triangle. So it's called a scaling triangle. So I can draw this triangle here. And I win my, my warrior, right? So it starts very, very slowly. So I guess I can play another level. Here I have a triangle. Right. So, so you build your army of small triangles, actually. Um, later, you int introduce quadrilateral. And after a while, actually, we introduce uh, properties of triangle. So, um, this is not the tutorial, but basically, this guy here, I can wake him. This is a scaling triangle, but you see he has two sides of same color. And the same color means the same size, the same length. So if I point to both sides, basically I'm saying these two sides are equal. And I can transform my normal triangle, or scaling triangle, to an isosceles triangle. You follow me still? Yeah? So this one, it's nothing, it's a normal triangle, nothing to do. Yes, I had to create it. And I keep on, right? So... We introduce angles and uh, the vertex properties. So for example, I can take this angle here and I can put it on the other way, side. Uh, what is this? Here I have a three horns character. It means I need a, an equilateral triangle. So I have to find one. I guess it's this one. So it's a normal puzzle game where we introduce new rules, right? But it's only mathematics. There is anything you do in this game, it's mathematics. I need another one. I don't know where it is. But it's this one. So actually this game is about proof and this is one of the most fundamental subjects in mathematics. If you study mathematics at a higher level, you will use proof. You have to, to justify uh, your, your claims with evidences. So there is one reason why uh, this famous book of Euclid called Euclid's Elements has been taught 
to pupils over so many centuries is because that's the fundamental idea behind mathematics. So that's the reason why this game is called Dragon Box Elements. Elements is a reference to Euclid, Euclid's elements, actually. So, let me just jump forward at a higher level. So here we have the, yeah, these characters here are trapezium, trapez, and uh, parallelograms. So you need to find two parallelograms and two trapezium. Oh, here I have a quadrilateral. So here I told you my business is to create digital manipulatives. So the parallel lines, that's these guys, these wings. You see there? So I can, actually I can show you. I can play with them, right? So that kids can really intuitively understand what, what's going on there. So it's not enough to build knowledge, but this is key to understand mathematics. And the, the, no, it's very specific, but uh, very often in schools, we are going to introduce um, words, technical words about mathematics, without giving the opportunity to kids or students to have a hands-on experience with what these concepts mean. So the key idea behind what we do is that we offer the opportunity to kids and students to have an experience with mathematics, mathematical concepts. And then a teacher or the students themselves could put words on what they have done. And this is a new, it's not a new pedagogy, but it's very difficult to have that kind of pedagogy without digital manipulatives. So, so here I have my quadrilateral, and I have parallel lines. So I can transform this guy into this one. So I need to find another one. Uh, maybe here. Right. It keeps on like that. So let me show you one of the last levels of this game. Uh, this is one of the last levels. So uh, ba basically, kids there, and there are many kids who have done that because we have played this, did it, and now it's on site, so we know that many kids are playing that. Uh, it's a, at least 20 steps proof. Nobody's doing that in schools. So because we created this visual interface to create new problems, we kind of created a pseudo-queue of geometry. And, and, and this is really hard to, to solve that, but within a couple of hours, I think any kid, with a little help maybe for some kids, could spend time enjoying geometry. And it's not geometry like recognize the triangle. We're talking about proof, something really fundamental. So, so, so what's the design process? Okay, so it took one year, maybe, okay, seven months. Uh, it's a lot of brainstorming. It's uh, a lot of work, and I can tell you that the developers working with us, they are getting crazy, because we go in one direction, and then we change directions, even if we have prototypes on paper. Because you never know, so you have to test, you have to listen, and it's really time demanding. But the reward is that you can create a new way to teach something which has been taught over so long time, the same way in a much more efficient way, a lot more pleasure. Um, this is the game about uh, algebra. So, so uh, I feel like uh, a fraud because uh, I received some messages saying, oh, what a beautiful game design. I haven't done anything. I just took mathematics and just took, that's the game mechanics of mathematics, if you see what I mean. So if you are out of inspiration to create games, just go back to mathematics. It's consistent, it's beautiful, there is a scaffolding, other than many rules, as many as you want. And, 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 and uh, I mean, 
I made free games, and free games are really cool for kids. So it's just, I'm a pro here. So, so, so basically, this game is about what's, what's algebra or solving equations. It's, you have a variable, and you need to isolate this variable on one side of uh, the equality sign. So you have a box. This is the metaphor for the variable or the unknown that you look at, looking for. And when it's alone, there is dragon getting out of the box. That's almost the only gamification we have in the game, right? That there is a dragon getting out of your unknown. So here, um, the idea is to remove numbers and letters so that it's really available for kids. So here, what you see here is actually a mathematical expression. The box that you see here, that you need to isolate later, it's, it's, it's X or Y or any unknown you, you want. And the green one, I'm not telling you, maybe you, you might guess what it is. When I click on it, it disappears. When I click on the green vertex, it disappears. Can you imagine what the green stuff can represent? What kind of mathematical expression it was? Zero. It was X plus zero. Here it's help me, I want to be alone, right? So basically this expression is X plus zero plus zero plus zero. It's really stupid. Nobody wants to do that. You don't want to learn that at school because it's boring. But here it's just fun because of the digital interaction. So I just, just click on stuff to make it disappear. It's fun. So we introduce very gently different rules. So for example, this one, it's uh, the addition of opposite numbers. So we have this metaphor of night cards and day cards. And when you put them together, you can guess what you get. You get the green vortex, which is zero. Right. And x plus zero plus zero is x. Right, so I win, and my dragon might evolve. Not sure. Yeah, uh, for kids around, I mean, the age of uh, maybe seven years old, they love it. They just love this evolution. They don't need more gamification. They just like, and, and the puzzles are really intuitive, so they, they like mathematics. We are logical beings, you know? So, I jump forward. Just to tell you that I'm having fun, actually. Um, okay, here actually you have okay you have two sides. That's the equality sign, actually this this bar there, and that's, that's the two sides of the equation. So basically you have a bubble, which is a metaphor for the parenthesis, and it's x plus something I don't know a is b. So the bubble is a parenthesis. So as a mathematics teacher, I know that parenthesis, it's really horrible. You hate that. You never know when it's there, when you can get rid of them. So because of the digital uh, medium, we can create digital manipulatives so that kids can play with parenthesis. Can you believe that? So this bubble here, it's a parenthesis. I can't put it here. This is B between parentheses. And I, I can, of course, create many parentheses. You haven't dreamt of that? And what do you want to do with a bubble? Kids love that. They just play with it. Just, they don't know what to do. It's just like, yeah. Right on here, this one, I put it on the other side. X is minus C plus B or something like that. Right. Um, so when the biggest problem we have, and I know I'm going to talk about commercialization, many parents, many math teachers, they start playing this game and they say, it's not math. You don't learn anything. So it's a big problem for us because we were thinking having a free premium version, you know, or open the first chapter. But the experience is that nobody understands what we are doing. So you have to pay. So you have to hear, to hear from friends that it works, and then you buy it. So it's very slow to spread. It, it, it's very slow. Um, but just, I, I, I show you 
the end chapter. Nice French music, I'm French. That's the kind of equations that you saw. There is no need for prerequisite to play this game, actually. So very smart kids, they just race to it. Uh, over kids, they need a little, little uh, help. So basically, we, we, because of the interface, we are actually creating new stuff, like how, how to change, how to create a parameter, something which is pretty advanced in math, actually. Just this idea that I can create a new card. So this is the box here. I can open it, and I can put anything in it. You understand that? I open a box, I put things in it, it's becoming a card. I created a parameter. In mathematics, this is really complicated for many, many kids. But here, because it's hands-on, it's so easy to understand and grasp it. And then I can do anything with this card. I can multiply all expressions with it. I can say, this box is divided by this box, it's one. One multiplied by e and two. This is two multiplied by e. I can expand it and change it. I can do anything I want. So, so um, it's a lot of work, really a lot of work. You wouldn't believe me how much I work. <laughs> but it's really fun. It's really uh, interesting, this intellectual challenge. So, so to, to wrap it up, um, my game, the game I'm playing, is uh, to teach mathematics much more efficiently and that kids really enjoy mathematics, something they don't usually. That's my mission. Um, and with hard work and video games, it's possible. And I discover new things almost every day, like mm, maybe we can create events. So it's just like it's, you have a stuff and you can generate new, new realities with it. And, and it's really a lot of learning. So uh, if you want to create games, I, I'm coming from the business. Uh, actually work, um, there is a really a lot of competition. Um, I, I would try to, to, to see games as more a tool to achieve other goals or express other stuff. Could be art, right? But it could be also meaningful stuff you do with games. This is really a powerful tool. So, you might be interested in, a, in another mission, maybe not mathematics, but something else, and use this tool, video games, to do something more meaningful or more impactful. So that's it. I hope it was okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if there are any questions. Maybe I talk so much. Maybe no questions at all. <laughs> and it's fair enough. Oh, there is a question over there. <laughs> so the question is if I have plans for to localize there is almost no language. Oh yeah, it's localized already in 22 languages. Yeah. 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 Okay, so the question is, how do I choose the learning goals I'm trying to attack? Um, so as I said, I, I want to create five games, and the only goal, I cannot cover everything, so I want to convey the big ID in one field, in one subject. So in algebra, to me, the big ID is really to understand that these objects, letters or variables, you can play with them. It's just a question, you have objects, on relationships, and you play with it. You have some rules on them. And to demystify this Y, this, this X, I mean, just like, what is this unknown? That was the barrier I wanted to break, right? 
because it's so difficult. So to me, we're going to create other games in algebra, but we did really something fundamentally important to demystify this. So when we target one learning goal, like in geometry, uh, I let the team actually work on it, and they started with construction. But to me, geometry is not about construction. We are missing the point. I want to, to teach the fundamental important idea for kids so that they are empowered and they can reuse this knowledge. So that's, so we target really the big ideas. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I could if I knew. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's, a, um, it's not easy what we're doing. Actually, we are, uh, we, we are many, we are many, we are not that many, but I have an art director passionate about mathematics, I have a, a game uh, developer passionate about mathematics, so it's more, we are, it, there is a creative uh, team, even if I'm leading, leading a lot, it's really a, a teamwork, I would say. So, for the other fields, I have some ideas, but it needs to be refined and so on. But for example, for functions, I know that Functions in school, you start learning about uh, linear functions, you know, and then polynomial, second order functions, and then logarithm, uh, uh, exponential functions. And it takes 10 years to teach that. So, uh, and here I'm very critical. How can you hope that kids will understand what a function is when, you, when they cannot recognize patterns? You see? So, so my, my, one of the key elements in, in what I'm doing is taking the curriculum and put it together and try to see what's in it, what, what, what do I learn actually. And the, the, I think we, we went in the wrong direction with the way we have designed the curriculum because we have cut everything in small pieces so that nobody understands what mathematics is. And kids certainly not understand that. They don't understand that. Yeah. What we have many uh, the question is if we tested that with adults, and uh, yes, uh, actually, if you would meet with me in an airplane, train, or whatever, I would test the game with you. I'm testing the game anywhere I go. So no, I, I finished the game, so I don't test them. But uh, if you meet me while I'm making a game, you would test it. And I test it with anyone, especially kids, but anyone. But many uh, adults actually uh, have played this game, and they have reviewed it, and they say, oh my god, if I had this game earlier in my life. Actually, they say that. It's very touching. Adults? It depends, because um, for some adults, it works. I don't say it's a magic bullet, it will work with everyone, but it, it, it works with the majority of people, even people who were, not, who were struggling with mathematics. And uh, you know, uh, the problem with mathematics, it's just like, if I put you in one of the levels, the end levels of this game, and you have not been through the game, and it, I mean, it regards any game, actually, if you just jump into one of the last levels of a game, you don't, give, you don't understand anything. And mathematics is like that. It's a game. It's a construction of tutorials, rules, and if you miss some of them, you cannot keep on doing that. And this is a major problem in school, is the fact that we don't assess the kids uh, in a wise way. We just say, okay, you can keep on learning, but you have not mastered the levels, the previous levels. So then you are accumulating something you don't master, and at the end, you give up, right? Yeah. No more questions? One more question.
Um, yeah, yeah, the question, question is, is if I feel like in mathematics classrooms we don't teach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess we do that at one point, very early. But then it's we we consider. I mean, teachers they consider that it, you know the previous stuff you should know. So then uh, you have one single chance to understand one concept, which is introduced to you. And if you miss this concept because you were sick or you had troubles at home or whatever, sorry, you will never get it back. So I, I think teachers are trying to explain as much as they can. I mean, good teachers. There are certainly bad teachers as well as good teachers. But uh, um, obviously, the, 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 the main problem is just like, it's just like in, a, in a video game. I mean, you have a tutorial. If you cannot replay this tutorial, too bad for you. Nobody would design a game like that. But that's the way we design mathematics classrooms. You were there for this tutorial, good for you. You got it, good for you. But you cannot replay it. Oh, it would cost tutoring. Yeah. Shall we say it's, uh, I don't have my glasses, so I think it's, there are no more questions. Better, uh, thank you then.